you hear me okay? Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Great crowd. Happy to see it. So some familiar faces, others I would love to get to know and, and meet you. So I'm going to... Um, we're excited to see so many great partners join us for the day today, engage with each other, and activate for continued housing growth. Everything you'll hear about today, from the big build successes to new housing finance programs, is very important and exciting work. It aligns closely with the strategic goals of the county's long-range strategic plan. Housing was a key priority in that plan because we know it's so important for residents to be able to live their best lives here in Ottertail County. The county board identified that we needed a leader in advancing this work, which is why the Community Development Agency, or the CDA, was established in, established in early 2019. Since then, we've had an excellent group of CDA board members who have, had, who have been great leaders in this work. With that, I'm going to hand it off to Jeff Ackerson, <clears throat> who is the CDA board vice chair, to introduce our first panel of the day. Thanks again, everybody, for coming. It's great to see all of you and look forward to more conversation. Have a great day. All right, if I could get the first panel to come on up and take your seats up here. Um, our kickoff panel today is about the successes of the big build. So as they're coming up, we'll, we're going to have some good questions, and I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves once they take their seat up here. We'll get the microphones passed out. And I want to say thank you to you guys for agreeing to come up here and be able to answer some questions today. Good morning. Uh, I'm Amy Baldwin. I'm the uh, Community Development Director for Otter Tail County. Good morning. My name's Barbara Dacey. I'm the Executive Director for the Otter Tail County Housing and Redevelopment Authority. I'm Val Martin. I uh, work for the City of Battle Lake. I'm Clerk Treasurer, Economic Development Director, and I'm also on the CDA board. Hi, I'm Elaine Hansen. I work for the City of Ottertail. I'm the Clerk Treasurer there. So again, thank you guys for agreeing to come up and answer some questions here for the group. So we're going to start out with, and maybe Amy, I'll start with you. Um, what is the big build, and how does it fit into Ottertail County's broader economic development strategies? Sure, great. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so the Big Build um, is the CDA's initiative to um, work towards getting 5,000 new preserved or rehabbed housing units by 2025 within the county. We're working collaboratively to meet uh, this goal through four action areas. Uh, one is to um, obviously increase the construction of new housing units, uh, to build partnerships with and expand the capacity of all of our partners, like all of you in the room today, uh, we're working to also seek funding opportunities to support housing investment, home ownership, and rehabilitation. And finally, um, a broad advocacy for increasing funding and support for housing from our state and federal partners. So this fits into the county's overall economic development uh, strategy, which is made up of four areas. And we don't do this work in a silo. We work with a lot of our partners. Um, our first um, area is uh, where we work um, to put Ottertail County on the map. And that certainly is led by Ottertail Lakes Country Association, who works really hard to make sure that Ottertail County is front and center when people are looking for a place to visit, uh, but more importantly, to live and um, to help address you know, our, our bigger workforce challenges. And that's what really kicked off the big build was uh, we knew we needed more workers. Our population was projected uh, to grow, but not grow enough to meet the needs of our future workforce. Uh, and that led to our, our second focus area, which is infrastructure. And there uh, we think about housing, broadband, childcare, those things that people need to be able to come and live and successfully um, lead their lives in Ottertail County. Um, and that's the focus of the area of the work of the Community Development Agency. The third area is employer support, which the CDA is also heavily involved with. Um, and we're uh, framing a new initiative called OTC Works that uh, we won't talk a lot about today, but we do hope to have a workforce convening similar to this event today, later this year. That we'll talk more about the work we're doing to support workers and uh, worker training and the development 
um, of our future workforce. And then the final area is uh, welcoming communities. We want to make sure that everyone who's living here or who comes here uh, feels supported and welcomed and included in the county so that they, um, once they make the investment to be here, that they stay um, here in the community. Thank you. And you mentioned partnerships, and so I want to bring in Barbara with the HRA as well, and, and maybe between Amy and Barbara both. In the short time since the CDA was created and the HRA was expanded, what do you think have been the biggest successes? Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, our biggest success is working collaboratively with cities to help them spark new housing investment in their communities. Um, our shared goal becomes uh, overcoming the barriers that prevents the housing to get developed that they want to see to serve um, uh, uh, the residents in the communities. And Battle Lake is a case in point. Uh, the problem was there was lack of single family home construction in the Hidden <coughs> Meadows subdivision in the southeast uh, part of town and the barrier was the value gap. Uh, in other words, the uh, construction costs were higher than the anticipated sale price. So Val took the initiative to contact um, Minnesota Housing and found the Community Impact Fund um, and to use that tool to help spark that development. And then she approached me and said, hey, can the HRA help? And the answer is yes. So the HRA can help in two ways. Uh, first, we have the technical uh, expertise um, and staff capacity uh, to help with the program application. Okay, sorry. Um, you missed all of that wonderful commentary. <laughs> um, so we can help in two ways. Uh, first, we can um, uh, provide technical expertise and staff capacity uh, to help the community, and in this case, Battle Lake, to prepare the program application. And then second, we are prepared um, uh, when appropriate to provide um, and share the financial responsibility that that program requires. So long story short, um, Minnesota Housing funded the application. Um, they approved 500,000 of value, grap, <laughs> value gap grant funds, say that three times fast. Um, and also uh, provided short-term interim loan financing uh, that needed to be guaranteed uh, by the HRA and in partnership with the Battle Lake EDA. And the purpose of the financing was to provide that cash flow between construction and the sale prices and receiving uh, the sale proceeds. So this is something where we become an extension, if you will, of the city and work together uh, to accomplish um, our shared goals. Um, and it's also important, I think, for the county and communities to work together because, as you all know, uh, development can take some time. Anywhere from one to three years, the market can change at any point. Um, so having the consistency and the continuity um, is very important uh, uh, to achieve uh, our housing objectives. Amy, Amy, if you can talk through a little bit also with the CDA's mm -hmm. successes. Yeah, great. So taking kind of that bigger picture approach, I mentioned the big build earlier and the goal to reach, uh, you know, 5,000 units with uh, by 2025. And we are, I'm proud to um, and happy to report, we're about 30% towards that goal since we kicked off in December of 2019. You know, and that was during a really challenging time from uh, supply chain uh, issues and delays and labor availability and just a lot of things happening obviously in the last uh, two years. So we have been able to um, uh, get progress to that goal and we're really excited to uh, share more information today about additional tools, financial resources, ways that we can help get your ideas, your projects, your community's vision advanced to be uh, continue to be a part of that the numbers towards the goal of 5,000 units here in a couple more years. We know there's a significant demand for those units. We've done, you'll hear more later about the needs analysis. There's information at your table about that and looking at what are those housing needs that, the, uh, that we're seeing throughout the county. So we wanna continue to work together with all of you to get us to that goal in 2025 and 
I'm just really excited that we've made it um, almost a third of the way there in just a couple of years. Great, thank you for that. Val and Elaine, I wanna bring you into the conversation a little bit here as well too. So why and how did your communities identify that housing is a priority? Well, I've got a little history lesson. lesson. This started back in 2014 when uh, the mayor from Hanning decided that we needed to get a way to get um, housing for people to come to the towns. Um, so he invited Ottertail and Battle Lake and we started meeting. We brought in, uh, eventually we brought in the Tracy Ryan to help us with some um, housing issues and get, get us to know some developers. Then uh, later on, we started working with the CDA. We started having them come to our meetings. And uh, after a while, it was just like each city took what we learned and went on to um, find the developers or do the, um, the groundwork to, to get some housing in our cities. Um, just to add to that, as far as Battle Lake is concerned, I think like most communities, housing has been a priority for probably 20 or 30 years, forever and ever. And um, Tri-City has made a big difference for us in um, being able to attract some developers and, and do some projects and stuff. But just some history there beyond that, um, we had a number of things that happened over the years. A comprehensive plan was done in 2005 with housing listed as a, um, a priority and a group called um, Lakes Area Development Association um, in 2008 also has listed as a priority. And our EDA was established in 2016, and I think that was, housing has been actually our main priority, um, along with you know some other priorities, but that's been a, a, one of the things that we've spent a lot of time working on. And I think we've, we've jumped through some hoops and gotten a lot of things done since that time. So Elaine, as, as we talk about some of the things in Henning, can you tell us a little bit more? Ottertail. Sorry, Ottertail. <laughs> if it, can, can you tell us some more about the Building Big program um, and the planning that went into it? Well, when the county decided to go ahead with the um, Big Build um, program, they were asking cities to kind of partner with them. Well, we had purchased a, a, a plat that didn't really make sense in um, Ottertail and so with the CDA's help we were able to replat that so that the lots made sense for Shoreland because the lots were all 20 20,000 square feet and they needed to be 40 so we went ahead and replatted that which now we do have them out um, or they're they're ready to be for sale and we've been advertising them for a dollar they're a dollar lot um, and then with that there's also incentives they are in a TIF district and that's something that uh, Tracy helped us set up. Um, right now we have, actually we have nine lots that are in the Happy Acres development and then we also have some lots that were, the city had for quite a while that we're, we're offering for sale in the same program, but that would be, they're eligible for the, um, tax, in, or the um, tax abatement program. So that's kind of where we're at with, uh, with this. Um, we have our sign up there um, and we have to change it to over $15,000 now because the county changed their, their program. But anyway, that's kind of where, where we are and how we got there. Amy, you want to add? Yeah, if I could piggyback on, on some of that. Um, you know, when the CDA started um, its work and was out in communities, really the key message is, is how can we help be additive and supportive and activate opportunities, opportunities that might be available within the community. So Elaine mentioned, you know, the city had owned some lots or some land, um, but we were able to provide some financial support to, to look at, you know, how can we get those lots into production or, or be buildable and, and um, ready to go. And that's just another piece um, that we think about, you know, as we talk to communities, there might be opportunities that, um, that there's been ideas, but how do we activate it? And uh, the resources that we can bring, the, the technical expertise that staff has to help think through those opportunities and how do you get them to, uh, into a project point. So it was, it's been great to work with Ottertail and, um, and have them really advance and, and, and build on what the county has been able to do. Uh, you mentioned the tax rebate program and that's our single family uh, incentive to help spur single family growth throughout the county. Uh, the county did increase uh, last year. The county board recognized that 
with construction pricing and, and values going up that uh, increasing the amount of that property tax rebate for the county up to $10,000 to help homeowners uh, get over that hump or um, any potential hesitation on moving forward with a project now uh, to get that new home built for them. So uh, I hope uh, most, if not everyone in the room, knows about the tax rebate program that has been up since January of 2020. And additionally, the county board did extend it um, to apply into that program uh, by the end of 2024 and uh, build in, start building in 2025. So aligning with the timeline of the big build and its goals. So that's the timeline for that program right now. Um, if you have any folks who you think might be interested in that uh, in your networks, please refer them over to us. We have information on the back table about the program as well. Sounds great, thank you. Elaine, as we have developers here and stuff today, would they come and talk to you if someone's interested in some of the properties or where should we send them to? Send them to City Hall. That's right. where we're at. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds like a great deal. All right, Val, we, you also have a project going on in Battle Lake right now called Hatchery Row. Can you talk a little bit about that and maybe some of the progress you've made? Um, and it sounds like we're getting ready to break ground this spring. Yeah, so um, the process started and you can see the, the pictures. Um, I think the idea, well, the first day I started working for the city of Battle Lake in 2015, um, I went a little ride with the public works superintendent. We drove by Hatchery Row and I thought, oh, we need to do something about that. So it's been in my mind since the first day I started working there. And the process basically started. And of course, looking at this, you don't know, but there were actually three, actually four property owners that we had to deal with as we went through this process. So it started with kind of an idea, um, getting a group, a committee together to discuss how could this area, what could we do here? What, how could it look? Ended up... Um, working with a local architect. We received a grant from um, Blandon Foundation to do a visioning study. And that, going through that process, I think was, was huge because it gave us that tool to um, provide that information to developers and say, hey, this is what our community thinks this could look like. Um, and you know, through this whole process, we spent, it probably took us a year and a half meeting with the property owners and saying, would you be interested in selling? What would you want? And um, that, that in itself took a little, little bit of time. Um, so we, EDA ended up purchasing the property a couple years ago. And um, with the help of the CDA at that time, we received a $50,000 grant, $50, grant to help purchase the property. Um, after we purchased the property, we um, had to do an environmental study. There was an old gas station. I think there were eight tanks, underground tanks. Um, nothing really surprised us, um, so it wasn't a huge issue, but um, we did have to do some cleanup work there. Um, we started with one developer. That didn't work out. Um, it wasn't too long after he pulled out. A couple weeks later, we met with another group of developers, and that's who we have right now, Good Neighbors from Alexandria. Um, and through this process, we ended up putting together a development agreement with them saying, okay, we'll do this, you do this, and this is, you know, and um, we ended up selling the property to them for a dollar. And with that, providing tax increment financing. Um, but with the tax increment financing, we, we changed it up a little bit so the city could um, retrieve some of our money back that we put into the property. Um, with the cleanup and the demo and all that stuff, we ended up with close to $500,000 in expenses to get this done. Um, so that's kind of, and, and right now where we're at um, with them is they're just kind of waiting on bids. And of course, things are higher now. So um, I think they're trying to do some rebidding to see, to make some changes. But their plan, do you have, oh, you do have the plan. So this is the plan, and I think it's way beyond what we anticipated it would look like. I mean, it's a pretty exciting project for the city of Battle Lake. It's uh, somewhere between five and six million dollars, uh, 15,000 square feet of commercial space, 12 to 15 apartments. Um, but I, through this process, and I can tell you Tracy Ryan again has helped with a number of grant opportunities and get us through this, but we received funding from the CDA for acquisition um, we received a deed redevelopment grant for about two hundred thousand um, dollars that was mostly for demolition uh, we also received a deed cleanup grant to help with the extra cleanup costs that the Petra fund wouldn't pay for we received a USDA road business development grant for ninety nine thousand dollars for 
infrastructure, and then of course the two grants received from CDA for fifty thousand for acquisition and twenty five thousand for demolition. But I can tell you through the process too, the CDA has been very helpful. And again, I can pick up the phone and talk to either one of these ladies and say, you know, do you think this is crazy, or do you, you know, is this a good idea, or you know, do you have any other ideas of where we can move forward with this? So it's been a big help. Yeah, thanks, Val. I think um, you talked about it. You know, you you. 2015, I didn't guess I forgot it was that long ago, um, you know, that this idea started. And it takes time, especially, but having that community vision, you know, I think you said, you know, once you did that visioning process as a creating that community based plan really has helped you secure those funding resources because it wasn't just an idea, it had the community behind it, the city's support. You're able to tell the story about the opportunity and, you know, and show the pictures and, and some of the challenges that uh, initially presented itself with that with the site. Uh, you mentioned tax increment financing. I think Barbara mentioned tax increment financing. I mentioned tax abatement. You know, these are some of the tools that we can help a community navigate, and we'll be talking more about that later. So if that's something that's, um, that you want to learn more about, how you can leverage those tools for projects in your communities or in your uh, the areas that you've identified, uh, there'll be a breakout session at 1045 and then again at a, a 115 if you want to learn about financing structures that includes uh, tax increment financing and abatement. So just want to put that plug in. I'll be on that panel as well. So you get to hear more from us, but also uh, more of an expert on that. Um, so I think that, you know, that, that layering of opportunities that you talked about, um, you know, USDA, the state through the Department of Employment and Economic Development, us at the CDA, uh, you know, we have funds to help um, with these redevelopment opportunities, with uh, commercial rehabilitation, um, even planning studies. We've uh, funded um, in partnership with a number of communities um, to do that process about how do we, you know, see what our, our specific needs are within communities. So. Um, there's, there are funding opportunities that we can help um, offset some of the local funds because we really do want to be a partner and help uh, move things forward and we see the importance of having that plan and that vision uh, to help uh, advance those ideas. So Amy, I'm going to quick ask, but so the, the big build in the CDA isn't just for new builds, it's also for? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's a great point. Uh, thanks, Jeff. So. Uh, Certainly new construction, we need to increase those units, but we also want to look at redevelopment opportunities. We've partnered also with uh, Vergus for a redevelopment project that they have in their downtown, which is amazing to see out of the ground now um, over the last few months. And uh, they are also bringing housing, but needed commercial space. And while we're talking about housing today, I think that's another piece that Battle Lake identified that they needed, some, uh, there was demand for commercial space. So this project will bring both those uses into the community. Um, so, you know, removing some of those, you know, low value properties that are maybe visually, ch you know, challenging, cause issues in a community um, from a, um, a just a nuisance perspective, I guess, and try to bring new opportunity there, but also the rehabilitation. So how do we preserve our units that we have, make sure that we're maintaining that housing infrastructure, that housing stock that we have in our communities right now? Thank you. Barbara, can I ask you a question about maybe some other community partnerships that have paid off in terms of getting housing built in our area? Yeah, yes. Uh, right now we are um, in partnership with the city of Dalton. And uh, I see Tanya in the back of the room there. Uh, so the city uh, approached us um, in 2020 to help them spark new housing development in a, for, uh, a former uh, uh, a mobile home park. So we shared the clearance and demolition uh, expenses, and then uh, we provided the technical assistance to help them start the process for a preliminary plat. And they're hoping to see single family, twin homes, uh, and uh, triplexes, quadplexes. Uh, uh, they are just uh, anxious to get uh, new housing development in their community, and we are beginning to receive uh, developer interest. Uh, so that uh, is moving along. Um, the city of Pelican, uh, I don't know if folks are uh, in the room uh, here from, from there, but they asked us to look at a uh, tax forfeit home to determine if that could be uh, rehabbed. 
Uh, the problem was is that it was too far gone, too, uh, expens uh, too uh, expensive uh, to rehab. And if it ever stops snowing, we will be um, demolishing that uh, quickly, and then we will work with the community on a redevelopment plan. Uh, so those are two more examples. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, any additional comments um, from anyone up here that we want to make sure that we get out to the group before we open it up for some questions or we talk through this? Slide? Um, I just want to make a comment about the deed application. We initially applied to deed for the redevelopment application when we had the first developer. And um, I had to call deed and say, they're pulling out. And we had to actually give that money back. We had, we had done some asbestos removal and stuff. But the good thing was they, they were so disappointed because they loved our project. And when we reapplied the second time, we got it. So sounds scary, but there are a lot of resources out there to help you through those applications too. And um, I mean, we did have uh, Tracy as our advisor help with the grant application, but um, Amy would be great to look over those things too and um, provide some, you know, some assistance if needed, so. Yeah, I forgot to mention that too, when uh, we did this housing um, thing through Tri-City, um, the, the city was able to purchase some land from Thumper Pond on Highway 108. And so we were able to bring in a, a developer right away to build an eightplex um, uh, townhomes. And then eventually we bought some more property and we sold it to Blue Spruce Bros Properties who um, has put in uh, uh, four plexes and and uh, six plexes and so that really is what kind of got us going as far as trying to um, bring that housing into the city of Ottertail. Thank you guys and like any good seminar we're not going to leave you with just information we're going to actually ask you to take this information and go do something with it and so as you see the on the slide up here we want to challenge you guys as well depending on whatever group you're in but as developers Make sure you're talking to your communities. Find out, do they have a plan? Do they have a plan for where they're doing these rehab, where they're looking for new housing, and how can you fit into it? And if they don't, start the conversation. Start working with them to really help create that plan and understand how we can move forward. And as cities, we have a lot of representatives from the cities here as well. Work on that plan. As you've heard from a couple up here, that when you have a plan, we can get things done. Um, we've got a lot of resources, a lot of different people out here that can help find money, help get things in place, but it starts with that plan and that shared understanding of the community's housing needs and those specific goals. And as we've heard from a couple of cities here, they've had great success by starting with that plan and getting those developers involved as well. So I don't know if we wanna take questions. We've got about, we've got a little bit of time. Um, if we've got some questions for the group up here, um, we'd be more than willing to, they'd be more than willing to help answer them. <laughs> Guys are an easy group this morning, or else you haven't woke up yet. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, looking at that hatchery roll build, uh, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, like you mentioned, a very ambitious build for a community like Battle Lake. Um, is that something that you? went into knowing that you were gonna have like the building fully leased or are you kind of taking a field of dreams mentality on it? It was a field of dreams mentality, <laughs> totally. We knew we needed housing and we knew uh, we absolutely needed commercial space, but it just it was just like one step at a time. I think that visioning study really made a big difference and I should have sent, brought a picture of what, what, that, what they came up with. It was much smaller than what it's going to end up being um, but it was just like, even if it's a parking lot, it's going to look better than what it does right now. So yes, definitely feel the dreams. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you again to the panelists and for your expertise up here this morning. And if we can give them a round of applause.